Okay. Uh, thank, you, thank you very much for the introduction. And um, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, several limit theorems uh, for the persistence diagrams mainly and also betting numbers appearing in some random topology models. And uh, yeah, I'm Yasu Hirauka from Tohoku University. <coughs> and uh, before starting the main topics today, uh, first I'm going to I want to talk about several applications of persistence diagrams to the material science in order to motivate today's mathematical work. Uh, <coughs> I, have, I have recently been organizing a uh, materials TDA team, mainly in, in Japan. And uh, those are the projects to which I apply TDA, and mainly persistence. So this is a polymer project, uh, second dimensional persistence, and uh, uh, glass structure analysis, metallic glass uh, using one dimensional persistence, and also, uh, we are applying to the uh, granular systems. This is a combination of the one-dimensional and the second-dimensional persistence with time series analysis. And uh, <coughs> uh, similar to the other scientific field, uh, there, is a, there is a bunch of data, even in material science. And uh, one of the standard data format in material science is given by atomic configurations, uh, mainly obtained by the computer simulations, MD simulations, and uh, which uh, we can think as a database of the, uh, database of the point clouds in our terminology. And uh, we have also have another type of database in material science, usually obtained by the digital images observed by the experiments, uh, which we can think as a database of the cubicle sets as a previous talk. Okay. Maybe, maybe this. Ah, here. Thank you. So there are several types of the databases. One is coming from atomic configurations, maybe considered as a point cloud, and then the other is a digital, digital images uh, view as a <coughs> cubicle set. And uh, uh, those data is expected to be used for the new development of uh, high performance materials in the future, and then uh, to this big goal, uh, we first need to describe uh, such a uh, complicated data in a compact format. And uh, as you know here, uh, here we can use um, persistence, actually. And uh, these projects listed here are following this guiding principle, basically. So we apply persistence to the database, to the atomic configuration, cubicle sets. And uh, <coughs> we try to capture some new geometric structures, which is uh, relating to some physical property or, mat or mat materials uh, properties. So, uh, so let me now explain two such examples uh, in order to make uh, mathematical motivations more clear. The first example is a hierarchical structural analysis of a silica glass <coughs> uh, by using persistent homology. So this is a bit, in a sense, this is a bit older result. Uh, and uh, this, is already, this, this has been already presented in several occasions. But uh, let me briefly explain the result here again. So <coughs> the idea is that uh, we regard the atomic configuration obtained by simulations uh, as a point cloud. And uh, we try to capture some geometric structures only embedded in the glass structure by using persistence. So here, these three panels show the atomic configurations of materials silica, <coughs> namely S silicon and uh, oxygen, SiO2 in a crystal state and a glass state and a liquid state, and each point corresponds to the atoms. And uh, the light three panels uh, uh, show the persistence of the corresponding persistence diagrams of dimension one. Namely, uh, we put a ball on each atom and gradually increase the radii and uh, put a uh, plot and bus this uh, pair on the plane. <coughs> and uh, as we observe, uh, the persistence diagrams clearly distinguish between among three states, crystal and then glass and then liquid states. And uh, in particular, in particular, curves appears only in the glass state. And in this sense, the persistence diagrams are sensitive enough to discuss or study the geometric structures of the glass. And actually, this is true. Uh, by studying the inverse, in a sense, inverse of this glass persistence diagram, uh, we have successfully found 
the, some new geometric structures only embedded in the glass state. And uh, we also found uh, that newly founded structure to the uh, physical properties, uh, function and the structural relationship. So this is one of the examples of the persistence to the database of the atomic configurations. And the next, <coughs> I'm gonna briefly talk about um, uh, materials informatics using persistence diagrams and the machine learning. <coughs> so the motivation of this work is that um, uh, we wanna uh, uh, we wanna develop a new uh, we wanna de develop a, a new uh, descriptor compact descriptor to directly connect the images digital images to some physical or materials properties such as uh, conductivity in battery materials. So this is a joint work with Toyota and also Clark, uh, joint work, Toyota and uh, uh, my postdoc, Bushe, and uh, uh, Ife Obayashi. And also materials pro properties coming from cracks or elasticities. So this is uh, our motivation. And uh, so just for example, let's think about finding trigger sites of the micro cracks appearing in uh, iron ore sintering processes. So this is the original XCT images, an image and uh, these two are obtained from the original, just focusing on the iron oxide part and the calcium ferrite part. And uh, in this problem, uh, we want to somehow uh, automatically predict the location of the uh, micro clocks appearing in a sintering process from purely uh, these images, a set of images. We can get a bunch of da data, these images. And, uh, Trigger site of micro clocks are supposed to be related to heterogeneous structures of iron oxide part and calcium ferrite part, but uh, no descriptors have been de developed so far. So our approach, briefly speaking, our approach is to regard this set of images as a database of the cubical sets and apply persistence for compact descriptor of images. And then we apply machine learning technique to the set of persistence diagrams to get statistical information from such a big data. <coughs> And uh, based on some mathematical work about kernel method uh, to the set of persistence diagram, uh, we can apply, for instance, the sparse regression technique known as lasso to the set of persistence diagram. And uh, we have successfully detected trigger site of micro clocks from the sparse persistence diagram, which is obtained from the lasso analysis. So this is a, another uh, example of the application to material science, mainly uh, to the uh, database of the digital images. Oh, yes, please. What are those red dots? Sorry? What are those red dots? Uh, these red dots are, are the are detected micro clock locations. Yes. Lo locations of the... Point. Yes, yes. And uh, from these two examples or applications, uh, persistence diagrams seem to be useful in material science. But uh, <coughs> there's at least one thing uh, we need to be careful. Namely, persistence diagrams from simulation data or experimental data depend on the system size, L. So say, in the first example, this length, simulated size is L, system size, and then digital images, this corresponds to system size, L. <coughs> and then those system sizes are usually very small scale, uh, typically less than micrometer, comparing to the real material, approximately meter scale. So, uh, in this sense, uh, we need to consider a scaling limit of the persistence diagram in order to study the universal properties uh, uh, such as uh, macros macroscopic materials property, which is irrelevant to the system size effect. So this is our interest. And uh, yeah, persistence diagram can be regarded as a counting measure on a plane, so just uh, some of the Dirac measures. So the fundamental question here is that uh, does there exist a limiting persistence diagram or in other words, limiting measure <coughs> as the system size L goes to infinity? And uh, from this motivation, the content of my today's talk is to study the limiting behaviors of Betty numbers and then persistence diagrams on random point processes, which is motivated from the atomic configuration model and also the cubical set, if which is motivated from the digital images. So this is the uh, uh, content of my today's talk and the motivations. And uh, let me now <coughs> start the main, uh, yeah, the mathematical part. 
Uh, the first, I will uh, focus on the limit theorems for random cubical homologies. Uh, this is a joint work with Kenki Titsunoda, and uh, the detail is available from this archive paper. So here I'm interested in the uh, scaling limit of the cubical homology, random cubical homology. <coughs> okay, so hmm. uh, first of all, let me introduce the several notations uh, <coughs> in this first part. So we consider a cubical set, random cubical set in Rd, d-dimensional Euclid space. So d in, the, in this talk always means the dimension of the space, background space, phase space. And an uh, elementary cube, usually denoted by Q, is defined by the product of the interval, d interval, with length one or length zero. So the dimension of the cube can be, can range from zero to d. And, uh, let, uh, and uh, let me denote by k, d, the set of all elementary cubes in our space. And uh, we consider, under this setting, we consider configuration space denoted by big omega. This is the uh, product of the unit interval from zero to one on all elementary cubes, on all elementary cubes. So each configuration is an assignment from zero to one on each elementary cube. So for example, we in this example, we assign 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 for two dimensional cube. So just an, how to say, square. And then 0 0.9, 0 0.2, 0 0.6 for the one dimensional cell at edges. And also we put a uh, value from zero to one on all vertices, which I don't write here. So this is a, a, a conflict configuration. And under this setting, uh, we consider probability measure on the configuration space, satisfying these two conditions, uh, stationarity and ergodicity. But these two conditions are, in a sense, natural assumption to study scaling limit in the Euclidean space. Namely, stationarity says that the probability is the same under translation. So tau x is a translate, means a translation of the event with respect to the vector x. So it should be the same. And uh, ergodicity says that the um, <coughs> probability of the event which is invariant under translation is trivial, zero or one. So, and uh, most of the results explained today are valid under this general assumption. But uh, if you are not familiar with these two concepts, you can just think as a product measure for simplicity. It means that uh, we assign appearance, uh, appearing probability on each <coughs> elementary cube and take the product. This is one of the simple example uh, in included in this model. And also more simply, we can think about a Bernoulli type model or in a random topology setting, we can think about a linear Meshram type model. Namely, we, const hmm? we assume the D minus one dimensional complete skeleton, cubical skeleton, and uh, we add D dimensional cube randomly with, prob with probability P. It is okay in our model. And also we can consider the costa Farber model. <coughs> it's a bit more complicated and uh, sophisticated model, but uh, this is also included. And uh, under this probability space, uh, our cubical set, random cubical set is defined for each configuration omega and for each time t. Time t is ranging from zero to one, the same interval here. <coughs> So given the configuration omega, we define our random cubical set as a sublevel set. Namely, it is defined by the set of elementary cubes whose value, assigned value is less than or equal to t. Then the randomness in configuration induces the randomness of the cubical set in this way. And also we frequently consider the restricted version of the cubical set, restricted by the by the window, so-called window, lambda n. The window lambda n, n is defined by the d-dimensional cube with length to n, like this green regions. So and the restriction on the window lambda n is denoted by xn. So by definition, the restricted cubical set is a finite cubical set, and uh, xt is an, in general, infinite cubical set. <coughs> and uh, finally, I will also consider filtration of that. 
since our cubical set is de defined by the sublevel set with respect to t, by changing the parameter t from 0 to 1, we can easily get a filtration. And the randomness of the configuration will induce a randomness in the filtration. And, uh, yeah, and uh, as you may guess, the reason to consider random filtration is that uh, I will explain some result connecting to the persistent homology. <coughs> okay, so these are the notations used in the first part. Yes, please. Yeah, but, but uh, given configuration, uh, we already have a realization of config configuration and the sublevel set is used here. So filtration property is uh, automatically satisfied. And uh, under this setting, uh, one of the results about the uh, scaling limit is a low of large number, about 20 numbers. <coughs> this is one of the results. The, the statement says that uh, let beta n be the Betty number on the restricted cubical set. Then for each dimension Q of the Betty number, and each time T, there exists a non-random constant beta hat, such that the restricted Betty number normalized by the volume, so this means, uh, uh, how to say, uh, Lubeck volume of the window, uh, converges to this constant as n, tends to go, uh, as n goes to infinity, almost surely. So, uh, since n is going to infinity, it means that uh, we, can, we are considering the scaling limit of the Betty numbers, and uh, this is, in this sense, this is regarded as a low of large number on the Betty numbers. So this is uh, one of the results, and uh, the next our interest is the positivity of this constant, in order to say that uh, this low of large number makes, has a meaningful, is, a, is meaningful, so in order to see the positivity of this constant, uh, let me introduce some notations. So first, given k is a positive constant, <coughs> uh, let LK be the all elementary cubes in the window lambda k, like this part. So all elementary cubes in red part. And uh, for any subset of elementary cubes L containing LK, like this situation, let us define random cubical set as follows, as, as before, sorry, as before. Namely, XL is a random cubical set restricted on L, and the XKL, similarly, is defined by the <coughs> cubes, elementary cubes in L, out, but outside of LK. So it means that we only focusing on the random cubical set in blue part, not in red part, sorry. <coughs> Then, uh, let me define some, a certain event denoted by omega for k. It is a set of all configurations satisfying this inequality for any subset L containing Lk. It looks a bit complicated, but uh, the, uh, the left-hand side here is a Betty number on L, Betty number on L, and uh, this is a Betty number on the only the blue part. So it means that, uh, roughly speaking, roughly speaking, this event, this event uh, guarantees that uh, for any choice of L, so given K, for any choice of L, at least one generator, at least one generator in red part is contributing to the uh, Betty numbers. Then under this uh, preparation, the we can show the following positivity result. So it's a, kind, uh, it's a sufficient condition. Yeah. Mm. If there exists some constant k with this property, so probability of this event is positive, then the, this limiting constant itself <coughs> is positive. <coughs> so, and uh, let me just remark that uh, this sufficient condition is easily satisfied by some standard models such as product measure model or linear measurement models and then cost of other models. So in this sense, this positive result is uh, relatively well, useful, mm. uh, valid, valid to those standard models. Uh, and then uh, uh, later I will show the sketch of these two, sorry, uh, two uh, 
sketch of these two proofs later. And uh, <coughs> let me now move on to the concept of the lifetime sum. Uh, lifetime sum on the window lambda n is defined by the integral of the restricted pet number on the total time from 0 to 1. This is the definition. And this is actually the same as the lifetime sum of the two-dimensional persistent homology on our filtration by, from the definition. And uh, it plays an important role for higher dimensional generalization of the so-called Fritz zeta function theorem. And I'm recently working with uh, Tomoyuki Shirai, and uh, we recently generalized, uh, yeah, actually, Fritz's theorem, Fritz's theorem is one of the uh, classical theorem in the combinatorial probability, mainly in the random graph theory, which connects the concept of the minimum spanning tree to the zeta function. And uh, recently, we generalized this uh, classical theorem into the higher dimensional setting, so mainly the linear mesh lamp type, random simple complex models. And also, we found an interesting connection between linear mesh lamp model and uh, uh, zeta function. And uh, uh, because of the time restriction, I will not explain the detail about this result, but uh, if you are inter interested, please see this paper. And anyway, so from this <coughs> background, we are also interested in the uh, scaling limit of the lifetime sum. And uh, here, <coughs> naively thinking, naively thinking, naively thinking, if we ignore the exceptional sets for almost sure convergence at each time t, appearing in the law of large number, by scaling the volume as before and taking the limit, this will become this. This is just a definition of the lifetime sum. And uh, from the dominated conversion theorem, we can easily switch the limit and the integral in this case. And uh, this integrand will converge to the beta hat as a result of the law of large number. So in this sense, it seems that uh, this quantity will seems to be the reasonable uh, candidate for the uh, scaling. However, this argument is not valid because uh, this is not an almost sure convergence in general because the excep exceptional set appearing in a low of large number is dependent on the continuous parameter t. So we don't know whether or not the union of such an exceptional set with respect to all t will again the measure zero. <coughs> so in order to prove the low of large number for lifetime sum, we need the following uniform convergence result. <coughs> I just show the statement. Assume the marginal distribution function for each elementary cube, Q, is continuous in T. This is satisfied for the product measure, linear measure model, and so on. Then uh, we have a uniform convergence of the row of large number, almost surely. And then based on this theorem, the, uh, the scaling limit, low of large number for lifetime sum, is easily proved. And actually, this is uh, uh, this can be proved almost. <laughs> this this is valid almost surely. <coughs> yeah. So this is a low, low of large number about the li lifetime sum. And uh, finally, I just show the result on central limit theorem. Uh, in this case, we assume, the, assume that the um, probability measure is a product measure only. Then, for each time t, our cubical model satisfies the central limit theorem. Namely, uh, the expectation of this squared value for the restricted pet number goes to term constant, and it, satis it gives us a uh, normal, distribu no normal distribution with mean zero and variance sigma square. And similarly, we have a central limit theorem for lifetime sum. And the proofs of these two theorems are basically a straightforward application of the result by Penrose. <coughs> yeah. So <coughs> these are the several uh, results about a scaling limit of, uh, in the appearing in the uh, random cubical homology. And uh, let me briefly show the sketch of proof of the low of large number to get some flavor behind, the, behind this model. So our interest is to show this convergence, almost sure convergence. Restricted page number divided by the volume converges to some constant. 
And for this purpose, let me set our targeting constant by this. Expectation of the limit, expectation of the restricted batch number divided by the volume and then take the split limit sub. Then I will show that this constant will be the uh, correct constant to have this scaling limit. And uh, <coughs> for this purpose, for a fixed K, let's take M such that these two uh, inequalities are satisfied. And uh, this is just dividing our window lambda N into M grids to each direction. So we prepare M to the D small boxes and the remainders. Each yellow box, the length of the each yellow box has a 2k. Each length of the blue box has a 2 times k plus 1. Then, as before, let me define our random cubical set given m and k by this. Namely, whose value is less than or equal to t as before, but this time, all elementary cubes has to come from some uh, yellow box yellow small box, only coming from only the yellow box. So in a sense, this is a disjoint union of the random cubical sets coming from each yellow box. And let me denote by beta mk its Betty number. Then our interest is the convergence of the left-hand side, to say this. And then using the uh, triangle inequality, we divide it into three parts. And the first part, the uh, numerator is the same, and the denominator is uh, different. But uh, from this inequality, by taking n goes to infinity, this goes to zero. This is just a simple calculation from this. And in the second, next, denominator is the same, but the numerator is different. But uh, again, in this case, by using this property, it means that uh, given x and y, x is included in y, the difference of the Betty number can be upper bounded by the number of the difference of the number of cubes. And also we have this upper bound using some uh, Lebesgue measure. Then by applying, so, and here, the, this Betty number is a Betty number of the region window. And uh, this is disjoint union inside of the uh, windows. So we can apply this property. And um, from this property and again applying this inequality, uh, we can show the convergence to zero. And then finally, uh, let's focus on this part, m to the d here and the numerator. As I said, this is a Betty number of the disjoint union coming from all yellow parts. All yellow parts have m to the d component. So it means that uh, this part can be regarded as an average coming from each yellow part. And uh, from the assumption on the ergodic, ergodicity, Actually, we can prove that uh, uh, from the ergodic theorem, this part converges to the expe expectation on the Betty number on each yellow box. So this becomes an expectation of the Betty number, this, divided by window size. It means that uh, by taking k in going to infinity, this goes to beta hat by definition. So it again goes to zero. So this is a sketch of the proof for the log large number. And uh, I plan to explain the positivity proof, but um, because of the time restriction, I will skip it. <coughs> yeah. Okay, so this is the first part of my talk. And uh, the next part, uh, I'll move on to the uh, Limit theorems <coughs> of the persistence diagrams uh, defined over the random point process, which is motivated from the atomic configurations of the materials. So, as I explained in the introduction, <coughs> uh, given the system size, say simulation size, we compute persistence diagram. And uh, when we increase the system size, persistence diagram will somehow grow. And uh, here, my interest is that uh, uh, the scaling limit <coughs> when the system size tends to infinity. And uh, I want to see the uh, 
uh, what is the correct concept of the limiting persistence diagram in this case. And uh, <coughs> in order to study such a problem, let me here recall uh, the recent result by uh, Yogeshwara, Subag, and Adra about the limit theorem for Betty numbers. <coughs> and as before, let lambda L be the window with length L, and let phi be a point process on, that on our space. So this is just a locally finite random counting measure, randomly arranged Dirac measures. I will explain more detailed definition later. And uh, let phi A be its restriction on some subset A. And uh, let C be the check complex built over this point cloud with radius parameter R. Then they prove the following. Uh, assume that uh, phi is a stationary point process having all finite moments with some mild condition. Then there exists a constant beta hat such that expected Betty number of our model normalized by the volume converges to this constant as, L, as the system size L goes to infinity. And in addition, if phi is ergodic, then this as a random variable this as a random variable converges to the same constant almost surely. Um, those are error terms? Uh, no? uh, er yeah, it's possible to estimate, well, not, uh, rigorously speaking, we can do some, we can give some est estimate about the error term, but uh, in this paper, uh, in my understanding, they don't, prove, they don't explicitly show such an error term, but uh, it's a really important problem and uh, it's also related to the central limit theorem. Yeah. Thanks for the well comment. So, uh, in the rest of my talk, I will generalize this result onto the setting of the persistence diagrams. And uh, <coughs> in order to, yeah, to that purpose, oh uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, let me first show our main result in the second part. Uh, this corresponds to the low large number of about the persistence diagram. So assume that our point process is stationary the same condition having all finite moments. This is just a mild condition. And uh, let <coughs> C be the point process on delta corresponding to the two-dimensional persistence diagram. Let me remark several things. First, delta. Delta is just a, delta is just a half plane above diagonal on which we usually define persistence diagram. Delta is just a half plane above diagonal. And uh, here, C. As I briefly mentioned before, persistence diagram is defined by the multi set of the point on delta. So it can be regarded as a counting measure, sum of Dirac measures. So in this sense, persistence diagram computed on some random object can be regarded as a point process on delta. And C means that notation. And uh, our geometric model K, which I will explain more detail later, include and check filtration and then lips filtration, standard models. I will explain that later. Anyway, so given this condition, uh, the, uh, settings, then we can show that uh, there exists a unique, a certain measure, random, called random measure on delta, such that the uh, expected be, uh, persistence diagram normalized by the volume uh, vaguely converges to that measure. I will explain the definition about the um, vague convergence later, but um, it's a uh, vague convergence, uh, only focusing on the compact part, compact region. And uh, in addition, if phi is ergodic, then this as a random variable vaguely converges to the same random measure, almost surely. So in the rest of my talk, I will try to <coughs> precisely, as much as possible, explain uh, the statement here. And the sketch of the proof is that uh, we first show a limit theorem for persistence petty numbers. Persistence bet number is the rank of the homology induced map, homology induced map in a certain interval, from say R to S. And then from those partial information, we try to build, explicitly build a measure on delta to, <coughs> to fit this convergence. <coughs> and uh, in order to precisely explain the content, let me here briefly uh, introduce several note. Uh, uh, concept from the random measure theory. Uh, basically, it follows a standard textbook by Karenberg. 
Uh, let S be a locally compact household, household space, and uh, script S be its Borel sigma algebra. And uh, let beta be, uh, sorry, B be the family of relatively compact set in S. Then, <coughs> uh, Radon measure on S is defined by a measure whose value is finite for all uh, relatively compact set. And uh, let me denote the set of Radon measures by M and N the subset of integer value Radon measure, like a counting measure, like a counting measure. Then, uh, let me explain the vague convergence. So given a sequence of measure, and targeting measure, that sequence vaguely converges to C if and only if its integral with respect to Cn converges to the integral with respect to C for any continuous function with compact support. So in this sense, we are only focusing on the compact subset. And in this case, we denote it by RO with V. And uh, and the random measure is nothing but a random variable from certain probability space to M. Target is a random, uh, sorry, random measure. And the point process is nothing but a random variable from probability space to the target. The, the target is a sub, uh, the integer value random measure, like a counting measure. So the standard example is a random point, random point cloud, random point cloud in RD. It's a example of the point process. And also, a persistence diagram computed on the random point process can be regarded as a point process again on delta, just a random arrangement of the delta measure on delta. <coughs> and this is our settings. And uh, let me here briefly explain that our geometric model, which includes uh, check filtration and uh, lips filtrations. And it has a very nice property about the so-called stability property. And uh, all right, so let F be the collection of all finite subsets, that's a finite point. And uh, here, let kappa be a function from F to the non-negative real, satisfying these three conditions. The first is uh, it should be increasing with respect to inclusion. It should be translation invariant. We want to use a stationarity property. And the third condition seems to be complicated, but uh, it is important to have a good local properties on the simplicial complexes which we will define. Well, just uh, we assume some existence of some increasing function which upper bound the uh, two vertices appearing in the same simplex. Anyway, so <coughs> given this, this kappa, then we define a filtration of simplicial complexes on the point process phi by the sublevel set as before, namely, Simplex sigma is assigned in our model if its assigned value by kappa is less than or equal to t. So we call this filtration by kappa filtration. And from this first assumption, this, this will be an, actually a simplicial complex because of the uh, increasing property of kappa. <coughs> and then by taking kappa as this, we can realize the standard check filtration and uh, lips filtration are also realized by choosing this. And uh, it satisfies some stability property which will be important to show the, uh, some, a certain property of the measure. And under this setting, we, we can first prove the following theorem. So assume that the phi is a stationary point process. And then uh, here, uh, beta rs means a persistent Betty number from interval r to s, the rank of the induced map from R to S. And then uh, expect, ex expectation of the persistent Betty number converges to a certain constant. And if phi is ergodic as before, this <coughs> as, random, as random variable converges to the same constant almost surely. So in a sense, this is a generalization of the Yogesh and the Subak and the other as a result, up to and under the setting of the persistent Betty number. And uh, based on this uh, theorem, as a corollary, we can show the following. Let C be the point process on delta corresponding to the Hughes persistence diagram as I explained before on our geometric model. Then for every rectangle I in delta, there exists a constant such that evaluation on that rectangle of persistence diagram 
and its expectation converge to that constant. And furthermore, phi is ergodic, then this as random variable converges to the same constant. And uh, you see that uh, this corollary is just a straightforward application of this theorem by just considering the alternating sum on each rectangle part, minus, plus, minus, plus, and apply this theorem. So we can show this corollary. So uh, let me summarize. So far, uh, for given each rectangle on delta, uh, we could assign a certain value by this. And in order to complete our theorem about the convergence of, uh, uh, convergence of the persistence diagram, we need to build a measure on delta uh, based on these partial informations. Not only rectangular part, but also any uh, Borel sigma algebra. So in order to complete the proof, uh, we need uh, uh, some further concept from the random measure theory. But uh, since I have no time, I will skip this. But uh, roughly speaking, the proof of the low large number for persistence diagram uh, follows in this way. So we first show a key lemma, a key proposition. Actually, this proposition guarantees that the partial information only coming from the rectangular regions are sufficient in this setting to build a measure, unique measure in our setting. Then, from the corollary shown in the previous slide, uh, we can complete the proof. Actually, yeah, proof. All right, so this is a sketch of the proof of the limiting scale, uh, limiting persistence diagram. And uh, let me denote such a limiting persistence diagram by new here. Then our next interest is uh, support of this limiting measure in order to understand more about this limiting behavior. And uh, this question is, in a sense, the same as asking the positivity about the Betty numbers appearing in the first part. And uh, to study such a problem, uh, the stability property is a really important, plays a really important role. First, we can show the following theorem. So given our kappa, which is Lipschitz with respect to Hausdorff distance, namely, uh, it assumes that there exists some constant gamma such that the difference of this is uniformly upper bounded by the Hausdorff distance. And then the bottleneck distance between two persistence diagrams coming from phi and phi prime uh, point cloud is upper bounded by Hausdorff distance with this constant gamma. Then we can show this stability theorem. Then uh, let me uh, finalize my talk. So say a vastest pair BD is called realizable if there exists some point cloud satisfying uh, uh, achieving that vastest pair. And uh, let me denote by R the set of all realizable points. And uh, let nu, as before, the limiting persistence diagram, which is guaranteed in the, our main theorem. Then we can show the following theorem. Let kappa be Lipschitz, phi stationary, and nu be its limiting persistence diagram. Then, if phi satisfies certain conditions about absolute continuity with respect to Poisson point process, it's a bit technical. I, I don't want to explain the details here, but a, a certain condition. Then, support of the limiting persistence diagram is given by the closure of the realizable set. I just remarked that uh, this condition is satisfied by the standard point process, such as a Poisson point process or a Ginevre point process. And uh, as a corollary, we can show the following. For instance, for check persistence diagram generated by the Poisson point process or a Ginevre point process, the support of the limiting persistence diagram is given by the total space delta as a corollary. OK, uh, I will finish my talk. Thank you very much. And uh, I just announced the conference in Sapporo this summer. Uh, Lan Levy and uh, the Catherine, Catherine Hess, uh, the uh, organizer, and myself, organizer. So if you are interested, uh, please come to Sapporo this summer. Thank you very much for your kind attention.
<laughs> well, it's a really important question and uh, yeah, uh, relating to his question. We need to have an error estimate to say, we need to have some error estimate. I was wondering if you experimentally Well, I didn't do any serious experiment, numerical experiment. So it may be possible to see some uh, orders of the convergence, but so far I don't know. Well, uh, it's a, uh, yeah, I want to study, but uh, so far I didn't, yeah. And for some points also, can you calculate the number? Yeah, say that again? Uh, can you calculate explicitly the JT numbers? Uh, for, the, some, for, some, for some example. Uh, uh, well, it's uh, the deriving an exact value is very difficult problem. Just uh, so far, we have an example about, about a perturbed lattice. It's uh, relating to the Samir's uh, comment. And, uh, once we have a perturbed lattice, we can estimate, and or we can, in some, in certain case, we can get an exact value of the constant. But the other, except for that, it's a really difficult question. Yeah. Um, I have a question. In Hamilton models, uh, there's some uh, uh, phenomenon when more detriment disappear only in one dimension. We switch from one dimension uh -huh. to another. Uh -huh. Does it happen also in? <coughs> well, uh, in the cubical model? Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, uh, from the numerical computations, it seems yes, but uh, I didn't do any mathematical uh, study about that. But uh, it seems to be uh, uh, correct, even in a uh, cubical setting. Uh, uh, what other points also have the full uh, vector support? Other than oh, I see. Uh, you, you are talking about uh, validity about this theorem, a corollary. Yeah, well, yeah. so far, we have Poisson and uh, Ginebre and, uh, hmm. I don't know. Uh, well, maybe possible, but uh, I don't know. I, I didn't check it in detail. But you also show us for both the positive, right? Uh, in the, yeah, in the, po in the uh, positive correlation case, mm -hmm. yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's possible to say this. Yeah. The point is that uh, we need to check this condition, absolute con continuity with respect to the Poisson point process. And once we can prove this, then automatically we can get a result. But uh, we don't, I don't study uh, case studies so far. Yes. Uh, my question is about the definition of this uh, cup of equation. Uh -huh. So, sorry, say that again? So it's the second condition. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it possible to get rid of this? Uh, well, uh, well by, uh, so just definition is okay, of course possible, but uh, <laughs> then we don't get uh, any stationary properties. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so if we uh, get rid of that, uh, we, don't, we cannot use the argument using the uh, stationarity properties, and that is very important to prove my, my main theorem. So, yeah. Yes, please. Can you see the Rekhaya moment that potentially the first order property is used that converges of expectation? But if you are interested in a temporal elysium, you might be interested in a covariances. Yeah. Can you do that? In this setting, persistence diagram, well, it, we, we haven't yet. We haven't do, done yet. But uh, yeah, we are actually doing now. Yeah, we don't get any results so far, but uh, yeah, we should do. Yeah. 